Hello everyone and welcome to this video on how to specify a factor mixture model in the M plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to structural equation modeling or other latent variable methods and often related to the M plus software. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional videos and workshops. So in this video I want to show you the M plus syntax for a factor mixture model in M plus. Notice that in this video I'm not going to discuss the output. I'm going to have a separate video discussing the results and output for this type of model. So check that out on this channel as well when it comes out. When you take a look at this syntax here you can see that what we're doing is we're running a two-factor model. You can see two factors F1 and F2 here, and they each have two indicators. Now, what is different in this syntax file from a conventional M plus syntax for a conventional um, confirmatory factor analysis is that here we have a specific subcommand under variable that specifies the number of latent classes to be extracted in this factor mixture model. And this is done with a classes subcommand. In the classes subcommand, we first of all specify the name of the latent class variable. In this case, I call it the latent class variable C. This is the name, um, the name is uh, um, freely chosen, so to say. You can pick what you want. And then in parentheses, we specify how many classes we want to extract. In this case, I'm assuming that we're interested in um, looking at a two-class model, a two-class uh, factor mixture model. And so then M plus with this um, command classes equals C2 will extract a uh, latent class factor or factor mixture model with two latent classes. If you wanted to look at other solutions with more latent classes, you would have to run a separate syntax for each additional solution. So for example, one where you have three classes, one where you have four classes. And so what we often do is then we compare those different solutions in terms of their model fit, for example, by looking at the Bayesian information criterion BIC and comparing those different solutions. Here we're only going to look at this two class solution as an example. And so this classes subcommand in conjunction with analysis type equals mixture makes M plus extract more than, so say, more results than just for the overall group. So M plus then knows, okay, so this is supposed to be a mixture distribution analysis where we have two latent classes. And so I have to estimate the parameters of this factor model in two separate previously unknown subgroups. If you didn't specify analysis type equals mixture, M plus would give you an error message about the classes command. And it would say, well, classes I can only give you if you select type equals mixture. So if you forget this, then um, the analysis um, will not run. Furthermore, what is special about this is that here I included two subcommands in analysis that refer to starting values. You can see there's first of all the starts command that um, here specifies starts equals 550. And then there's also a command that's uh, called st iterations that specifies 50. And so why is this included here? This is um, a setting that um, is a little bit more conservative, so to say, than the M plus default when you specify a factor mixture model or other type of latent class model. Mixture models and latent class models can be prone to local likelihood maxima. We often use, or by default, we use maximum likelihood estimation to extract um, those solutions or to estimate the parameters of those solutions. And so um, the um, solution can be a local maximum sometimes when you don't run enough starting values. And M plus by default only uses relatively few sets of starting values for a mixture model, and that may not be enough to obtain a valid solution. So this is so say those are commands that um, are supposed to ensure that you don't end up with a local likelihood maximum. In the model statement, you can see that this looks like a regular confirmatory factor analysis. 
The only difference here is that I also included a statement that says overall in percentage signs. And so this overall command tells M plus that the factor model as such is the same in both latent classes. So for both latent classes, we assume that there are two factors. And so overall, so to say the same model holds in both classes where the MRT1 and MRT2 indicators measure factor one and the math one and math two indicators measure factor F2. In this case, F1 is a spatial ability factor. MRT um, stands for mental rotations test. So those are two test halves of a spatial ability test. And then the second factor is a math performance factor where the two indicators are subscales of a math test. And so we're extracting the same two factor model in both latent classes. By default, M plus will hold all parameters of the factor model equal across classes except for the factor means. The factor means will be freely estimated in all classes except the last class. In the last class, the factor means are fixed to zero for identification and then the other means in the other classes are estimated and can therefore be directly compared to the last class. All other parameters of the factor model by default in M plus are constrained to be equal across classes, including the factor loadings, the intercepts, the residual variances, the factor variances, and the factor covariances. And so those are um, defaults that you can also change with class specific statements. You could say that you wanted, for example, the factor means to be different across classes or certain loadings or whatever. And I'll show that in a separate video sometime how you can specify class specific statements for the parameters of this factor model. Now, what would happen if you didn't have the model statement here? Well, first of all, then obviously it wouldn't be a factor model, but M plus would still run this analysis, even if you omitted this model statement. However, then you wouldn't get a factor mixture model, but instead what you would get for continuous indicators is a latent profile analysis. And I have a separate video on that topic as well. So if you have continuous indicators, you have a class statement and you have type mixture, but no model statement, then you get a latent profile analysis by default. If your indicators under use variables are also defined as binary or categorical using the ordinal, um, using the categorical statement in M plus, and you, if you omitted the model statement, then you would get a classical latent class analysis in M plus. So you can see that the type equals mixture statement and the classes statement are general commands in M plus that are used whenever you have some kind of mixture distribution model, whether it be a factor mixture model, a regression mixture model, a path analysis mixture model, or a latent profile analysis, latent class analysis, growth mixture model, you would always use those. And then it depends on your model statement, what kind of model you get. If you omit the model statement, then it'll impose a very restricted covariance structure um, that is in line with latent profile analysis for continuous variables, or you can include a model statement and have a factor model uh, um, fit to those indicators or pretty much whatever you want. So M plus is very flexible with this type equals mixture and classes um, statements in terms of what kind of mixture model you can create. The other commands that are shown here refer to the sample statistics that are then also output by M plus as well as the completely standardized solution, which is often useful to look at, for example, when we're interested in the standardized factor loadings. I will discuss the output for a confirmatory factor analysis mixture model in a separate video on this channel. So keep checking or keep subscribing to this channel so you won't miss that video on the M plus output for this model. I hope you found this useful to get you started on how to specify a factor mixture model in M plus. If you liked it, then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to leave a comment in the comment section as well as to check out the description for additional videos and workshops and I'll see you next week.